What's going on, YouTube? I'm D. Ellis. I want to welcome y'all back to another episode of Crime Circuit. Um, of course, this channel is for educational purposes only. Everything that we're about to discuss, um, I've strictly found on the internet. Um, before we get into this video, it's going to be a little disclaimer. If you guys are sensitive to murder, you know, obviously things of that nature, I suggest you click out and hopefully i'll see you in another video um so we're going to talk about frank lucas um a lot of, of y'all people probably already know this story but uh i want to get a little in depth into it um so let's get into the intro <laughs> Lucas, born September 9th, 1930, was an American drug trafficker who operated in Harlem, New York City during the late 1960s and early 1970s. He was known for cutting out the middleman in the drug trade and buying heroin directly from his source in the Golden Triangle in the Southeast Asia area. Lucas boasted that he smuggled heroin using coffins of the dead American servicemen as depicted in the feature film, you guys also may know as American Gangster, which fictionalized aspects of his life. This claim is to be denied by the Southeast Asian associate, Leslie Ike Atkinson. In 1976, Lucas was conv convicted of drug trafficking and sentenced to 70 years in prison. But after becoming an informant, he and his family were placed in a witness protection program in 1981. His federal and state prison sentences were reduced to time served plus lifetime parole. In 1984, he was convicted on drug charges and was released from prison in 1991. Now, in his early life, Lucas was born in LaGrange, North Carolina to Fred and Malie Nate Jones Lucas. Raised in Greensboro, North Carolina, he said that the incident that sparked his motivation to embark on a life of crime was having witnessed his 12-year-old cousin's murder at the hands of the KKK for apparent reckless eyeballing. A Caucasian woman in Goldsboro, he drifted through a life of petty crime until one occasion when he got into a fight with a former employer whose daughter, Frank, had been having an affair with. Now, in the fight, Lucas hit the father in the head with a pipe, knocking him unconscious. He then stole 400 from the company and set the establishment, <clears throat> excuse me, and set the establishment on fire. Later, Frank fled to New York City at the uh, behest of his mother, who feared that he would enter an imprisonment or life cycle or even be lynched. Now, once in Harlem, he quickly began including in petty crime and pool hustling. Before he was taken under the wing of a gangster, Bumpy Johnson, Lucas' connection to Johnson has since come under some doubt. He claimed to have been Johnson's driver for 15 years, although Johnson spent just five years out of prison before his death in 1968. According to Johnson's widow, much of the narrative that Lucas claimed as his actually belonged to a young hustler named Zach Walker, who lived with Johnson and his family, but later betrayed him. Now, after Bumpy Johnson's death, Frank Lucas traveled around and came to the realization that to be successful, he would have to break the monopoly, the monopoly of the Italian mafia held in New York, traveling all the way to Bangkok, Thailand. He eventually made his way to the Jack's American Star Bar and R, R hangout for black soldiers. It was here that he met former U.S. Army Sergeant Leslie Ike Atkins. Atkinson, who was from also Goldsboro, North Carolina, and married to one of Lucas's cousins. However, Atkinson's nickname, Sergeant Smack, by the Drug Enforcement Administration, also known as the DEA, he said he had stripped 
ship drugs in the future, not caskets. What, whatever the method he used, Lucas smuggled the drugs into the United States with a direct link from Asia. Lucas said that he made $1 million per day selling drugs on the 116th Street, though this was later discovered to be an exaggeration. Federal Judge Sterling Johnson, who was the special narcotics prosecutor of the New York City at the time of Lucas's crime, uh, called Lucas's operation one of the most outrageous inter international dope smuggling gangs ever. An innovator who got his own connections outside the U.S. and then sold the narcotics himself in the street. In an interview, Lucas said, I wanted to be rich. I wanted to be Donald Trump rich. And so help me God, I made it. Now, Lucas only trusted relatives and close friends from North Carolina to handle his various her heroin operations. Lucas thought that he were less likely to steal. He Pretty much he thought that his family and closest friends would be less likely to steal from him. And pretty much uh, that's when he started his heroin, uh, also known as Blue Magic. This was 98 to 100 percent pure when shipped from Thailand. Lucas had been quoted as saying that his worth was something like 52 million dollars. Most of it in Can, most of it in Cayman Islands banks. Added to this, maybe a thousand keys or 2,200 pounds of dope on hand, with the potential profit of no less than 300,000 per kilo. This huge profit margin allowed him to buy property all over the country, including office buildings in Detroit and apartments in Los Angeles and Miami. He also bought a ranch of several thousand acres in North Carolina, which he, which he ranged 300 head of the Black Angus cattle, including a breeding bull worth $125,000. Lucas rubbed shoulders with the uh, with the elite of the entertainment, political, and criminal worlds, stating later that he he met Howard Hughes at one of Harlem's best clubs in the day, in his day. Though he owned several mink and chinchilla coats and other accessories, Lucas much preferred to dress casually and corporately, so not as to attract so much attention on himself. Now, when he was arrested in the mid-1970s, all of Lucas's assets were seized. In January of 1975, Lucas' house in Teaneck, New Jersey, was raided by the task force consisting of 10 agents from a group from the group two uh, from Group 22, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, and 10 New York Police Department detectives attached to the Organized Crime Bureau in his house of the in his house, in his house, authorities found five hundred and eighty-four thousand dollars in cash. Though Lucas contended that the officers execute, executing the search departed the full eleven million dollars temporarily stored in his attic, and documented only five percent of the currency seized. He later, he was later convicted of both federal and New Jersey state drug violations. The following year, he would be sentenced to 70 years in prison. Once convicted, Lucas provided evidence that led to more than 100 further drug-related convictions. For his safety in 1977, Lucas and his family were placed in a witness protection program. However, in 1981, after five years in custody, his 40-year federal term and 30-year state term were reduced to time served plus of lifetime parole. In 1984, he was caught and convicted of trying to exchange one ounce of heroin and $13,000 for one kilogram of cocaine. He received a sentence of seven years and released from prison in 1991. Now, Lucas's wife, Julie Ferriott, was also convicted for her role in her husband's criminal enterprise and spent five years in prison as well. After she was released, the couple lived separately for some years and Ferry had moved back to Puerto Rico. After several years, however, they reconciled. And according to a uh, December of 2007 Village Voice article, they had been married for 40 years at, the, at that time. 
Lucas fathered seven children, including a daughter, Francine Lucas Sinclair, and a son, Frank Lucas Jr. Lucas, Sin Lucas Sinclair entered the Witness Protection Program with, with Lucas in 1977 and has since started a website called The Yellow Brick Road containing resources for children of imprisonment parents. Now, Lucas was known to be electric Eletic in his religious in his religious preferences, having converted to Catholic Catholic faith while at a prison in Elmira, which he stated he did not because the prison chaplain assisted inmates being released on parole. He had Baptist affiliations as well. Now around his final years and up until his death, his last years, Lucas was confined to a wheelchair due a car due to a car accident that broke his legs. Lucas died at the age of 88 on May 30th of 2019.